All right, well, this episode is Rarity Takes Manhattan, and it's Rarity's first in almost two seasons on the dot, I'm pretty sure, because, yeah, her last one, even as the co-star, I'm pretty sure it was The Secret of My Excess, and, uh, yeah, that was episode 10 of season two, and now this is eight of season four, so almost on the dot. So, okay, how do they bring Rarity back into the spotlight? Uh, all right, well, starting out the sort of, um, typical Rarity story, the, uh, yeah, it's Fashion Week in Manhattan, and she's off to compete, show her stuff, rise to the top, and, um, all right, all of the friends are coming with her to spend however long it was there, a few days, week, whatever, but, um, okay, so Rarity, though, is really excited about Manhattan, the big city, and, yeah, if you've ever been to Manhattan and not seen the downside, you'll know why, but, um, okay, so she's come prepared, though, she got them all tickets to Hinny of the Hills, the hottest show on Bright Away, which, uh, yeah, this show probably will never get tired of the horse puns. I might, but it remains to be seen, so, um, okay, so, yeah, the, um, it turns out, too, though, she shouldn't be able to get these. She, uh, did a favor for, uh, one of the producers or whatever of the show a while back, designed some of the costumes for it, so he got her tickets to see it. We never see this guy, by the way, but anyway, so... Yeah, they're really excited about how that demonstrates uh, the value of generosity. Um, that, yeah, do something nice for someone and you never know when you might get something back. So, okay. Um, but when they get there, though, Rarity uh, goes, I guess, all the way with that. She start just breaks into a song as they're talking about uh, the musical, about, well, they said it uh, Pony's bursting into the song at the drop of the hat. Who does that? Oh, Manhattan. But, um, okay, so yeah, Rarity uh, sings about how uh, wonderful it is to be generous and how much she likes being generous in the big city and how uh, that does all the good in the world. And as she's singing, she's running around doing favors for everybody she can find. And, um, yeah, so guess what's going to be put to the test in the conflict? But, um, I don't know, I, hey, you thought that Rarity's generosity was a little more reactive, a little more when she was put to the test, not kind of a carbon copy of what Pinkie Pie does, calling herself the Smile Patrol? Well, hey, rest assured, if they hadn't done it this way, how would they telegraph the conflict? But, um, okay, so, then though, yeah, it turns out she's a little bit late, and then, uh, kind of a nice moment here, I guess, the, uh, as, uh, just when it seems like the, um, yeah, the world is about to abandon her after the whole montage. They, like, there's a long line in front of the cab, and nobody is willing to let her go in front because, uh, yeah, they're all waiting, but, um, or, or, and, yeah, they don't buy her story and whatnot. Just then, uh, her generosity pays off because, uh, some, some other cab pony whose cab they, uh, the gang all helped fix when it was broken down, he comes around and says, yeah, your wish is my command. He gets her there on time, and, yeah, so, um, also somebody she did a favor for brings the dresses she forgot, so, okay, um, she gets there, she, um, is, uh, already put under pressure even for arriving just a few seconds early, it's, uh, the standard is, uh, come a half hour early, early, just in case, so, okay, um, yeah, as she's setting up, though, she runs into Surrey Polo Mare, and uh, this is the one bit of trivia I did get ahead of time, uh, that, yeah, Surrey Polo Mare is voiced by the same actress who voices Rarity, and, um, okay, she gives a pretty funny performance, too, just like this, uh, sort of valley girl who is now, I guess, graduated and starting out her career. She ends every other sentence with, <laughs> and stuff like that, just, uh, anyway, though, um, okay, so... Rarity, uh, the, yeah, she knows Surrey from the Knitters Club or whatever it was, and, uh, um, yeah, Surrey sweet talks her, tells her that she really loves the fabric, and, uh, she actually thinks it would be perfect just to accent her, uh, whatever she made, so, um, yeah, Rarity, she's come up with this breakthrough design, or this breakthrough fabric that, uh, yeah, is sure to win it for her, and she lets Suri have a roll of it, of course, which, uh, Suri then uses to, um, copy all of Rarity's dresses, uh, to a T, and then she gets there first the next day to, um, yeah, present 
first and make it look like Rarity's copying her, and I have no idea why that plan works every single time we see it in these stories. I, I mean, is it, like, really so hard to stand up and say, like, that is my fat I'm calling foul right now, they stole that from me, I am willing to fight about it, anything, I can, I have witnesses who will tell you that it's mine, I, I can tell you exactly how I made it, exactly all of the above, I mean, the, yeah, that is all no match for, well, I showed you mine first, but anyway, but, um, so yeah, and this assistant, um, was, knew that that's what she was doing, but she's kind of a timid, uh, little pony, her name is Coco Pomel, and, um, she, well, she comes back, she's significant later, so, yeah, but Rarity runs back to the hotel, and, um, you know, Doug sobbing, and, uh, yeah, in case you didn't get what the, what the, uh, theme they're exploring here was, she specifically said, my generosity has ruined me, ruined, and the friends, even though they're in the middle of a, uh, pretty busy schedule having fun with expensive restaurants and, uh, spas, and, of course, that show later, they all volunteer to help Rarity out, they, uh, pick her up, tell her, yeah, we'll, we can get you back in the game, just make some new clothes, whatever, because I'm... <laughs> Overnight, she's gonna come up with something to uh, top the project she spent who knows how long working on. But anyway, that's exactly what she does, though. She looks around the hotel room and uh, is struck with the idea for Hotel Chic. The friends all yeah skip uh, most of their plans to help her out, and yeah, then this part though is where it. I mean, well, okay. What happens it after they? Um, encourage her, pick her up, make her happier. They mention while they're helping her get back in the game that they were hoping to uh, catch the show later. And <laughs> does she A, put pressure on them to stay, B, play manipulative games that uh, she knows are wrong but is willing to do now that she's been handed a hard slice of life by Suri Polomare? C, uh, work it in and there's no conflict, or D, become a paranoid schizophrenic and start accusing them of trying to abandon her in her hour of need and going on about long speeches about how it's every pony for themselves in this town and a whole ton of other stuff that was not prompted in any way by the dialogue that just transpired. And if you said D, you probably... Notice that it took me a while longer to describe that one, but, um, yeah, I, that was, and I'm, so, anyway, though, um, the, okay, so the friends are then pressured into skipping Hinny of the Hills, not seeing it, and so, yeah, the next day, Rarity, after they finish working through the night, she just grabs the dresses and leaves, and, you know, Twilight calling after, you're welcome, and, well, yeah, doesn't even notice, so she gets there, and um, even though everybody is still raving over Suri Polomare's totally original line, they actually go out of their way to make sure we hear them say that. It's so original, but... Okay, so yeah, uh, Rarity presents hers, and it's a huge hit, and yeah, sure enough, it looks like she's one-upped Suri, and uh, yeah, she's back at the top of her game, everybody is raving, but... Uh, then, after we got her incredibly fast and drastic breakdown with no progression, it's time for her equally drastic recovery. She looks out, notices that her friends uh, were not there, and has a 180 degree change of heart, and just like, oh no, what have I done? And it just runs out as fast as she can, brushes past uh, Prim, who's telling her to come talk to the judges, tell her how she didn't answer any questions they'd want to know. She knocks someone over on the way out and, yeah, runs back to the hotel as fast as she can. And the bellhop tells her that the friends checked out, so she thinks they've gone back home. And then uh, we actually get a reprise of um, the song from earlier, except now in a much more melancholy tone, like so makes it sound to, with, well, yeah, flipping it around, because before it was... Manhattan, what you do to me, now it's Manhattan, what have I done, and, um, it works pretty well, it's a very gentle moment, so, um, 
Okay, props there. And uh, so she heads back to the uh, uh, wherever the Fashion Week event is being held to tell the poor man's photo finish that, uh, yeah, she has to head back home now, but thanks for the opportunity and everything. But, um, okay, uh, sure enough, the friends come walking out. Um, turns out they were actually, yeah, since the trip was just about over, they decided to check out before they came to, uh, yeah, watch her compete. They only missed her part because they overslept, but, um, anyway, though, uh, according to Surrey, Rarity lost, and, uh, the Prim is really mad at her. She just is, the best thing you can do is steer clear, and, of course, nobody questions this Surrey's r word that Rarity lost, but, um, okay, so, regardless, Rarity just says, you know what, I don't even care. i willing to forget about, you know, that entirely, just, and, well, okay, drastic swings in this episode, but anyway, um, so, okay, the friends, however, um, they tell her that, yeah, they had no intention of, uh, walking out on her because of one spat they had, you know, they, um, well, yeah, they've already forgiven her, and that they know that she's, uh, their friend, and, I mean, they might not have seen her at her best, or Twilight's words, but, uh, yeah, they are, I mean, she's their friend, she means something to them, they don't need to be repaid to, um, yeah, make nice with her. Or do they? Because it turns out Rarity has, um, already tried to make it up to them. Now, that's, uh, yeah, she's set out with a real plan to do that. She has, uh, secured more tickets for them to see, uh, well, not even tickets. She's, um, arranged to have any of the hills performed for them, uh, all by themselves, just, uh, isolated showing just for them. But, uh, to do this, though, she had to, uh, um, volunteer to stay in Manhattan and make costumes for this friend of hers, um, for, uh, the next, so, um, run of shows or whatever, for some, um, point A to point B in time, a full-time thing, I guess you can call it. So, Okay, and I mean, it's in many ways a good opportunity to, you know, it's it's a job, it's a job worth having, but, you know, bottom line, she doesn't want to do it, she would rather be making her way up from home with her friends, where, where she lives, but, uh, okay, so, but, yeah, it was, she, of course, knew that it was the right thing to do to make nice with her friends, but, um, anyway, though, at that moment, uh, Coco Pomel walks in, you know, cause I told you she'd be important, uh, she reveals that Surrey, surprise, surprise, lied, uh, Rarity did not lose, and, yeah, she was just trying to get her to stay away from, uh, poor man's photo finish, because, um, if Rarity didn't claim the trophy or anything, then I guess it would have to go to the runner-up, because they couldn't just mail it to her, so, okay, um, so, which, and I mean, I get, granted, I would believe that that would work. I still have no idea, though, why uh, nobody questions Surrey on that one. But anyway, so Coco uh, gives Rarity the trophy and um, also a gift, like a rainbow spool of thread, which is kind of this episode's theme. Like when uh, Rarity sees that the friends are not there, uh, she sees like a rainbow flash across the uh, section they were supposed to be sitting in. So, okay, the... The rainbow connection, am I right? But, um, okay, so, yeah, and then, um, Rarity, uh, um, after hearing a speech from Coco about how she was beginning to think that, um, it was, it really was everyone for themselves, because, I mean, she, you can tell she's not really a bad, uh, person, but she, d well, is sort of easy to intimidate, like, she's not flutter shy, shy, but I mean, she, uh, you know, she knows the game, she is willing to play, but I mean, she's, um, a bit meek and all of that, but she was inspired, though, when she saw Rarity and her friends to realize that, uh, Suri's way isn't the only way to be, even if most of the people, I guess, or ponies seem to be like that, so yeah, she quit her job and, um, with Suri and it's gonna try to, make it doing it more Rarity's way. So Rarity offers her to take the job, 
instead, because I mean, she actually would benefit from that. She would want to do that. It's a great opportunity, and she needs a job now, of course, and she's pretty good at this, so I guess she's an acceptable replacement for Rarity, so... Okay, and that's our moral. The friends go home, Rarity writes in the journal, and yeah, so... Uh, I think that this episode is kind of like Rarity's Magical Mystery Cure. And, um, well, yeah, if you've seen my review of that one, uh, yeah, that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've, and, uh, most people seem to like Magical Mystery Cure, or at least most of the people talking to me, so, um, yeah, and this episode, too, uh, see, like, the only word I've heard on it, or words I've heard on it, is that, uh, everyone, or, well, most people seem to really like it, everyone I've heard from almost, so, yeah, I'm probably not going to make a lot of friends here, but, um, alright, just, yeah, brace yourselves, and it'll be over soon, but, uh, okay, uh, yeah, just, basically, I mean, well, Magical Mystery Cure, what did I say about that one? You know, it wanted to be great, it, uh, knew that fans wanted something great, and I mean, it, uh, really, I mean, it had an idea, and it knew what a great story like this looked like, you know, that uh, the hero has a quality that's really admirable, and then it faces this huge detrimental test, and then uh, they do something equally as uh, significant and pass the test, and then rise to whole new levels and inspire great things, and, uh, I mean, closer, it's like, you know, okay, but, um, well, I, well, actually, to see what I mean, I think that uh, if I have any one chance to, uh, sort of get across what I mean on both of these episodes to, uh, sort of my perspective, how I feel watching this, it's like, okay, I think this is probably that chance because, uh, this episode in structure, it's pretty similar to, um, in many ways, anyway, it's very, very similar to Sweet and Elite, which I, I didn't think was a great episode, but, you know, it was the uh, first one I ever saw. I just, you know, I do, uh, I always remember it for that, at least, and it did sort of show me, even when I uh, wasn't too sure about it the first time, it did sort of show me uh, the some of the special qualities the show had, so, okay, point-by-point point comparison, Sweet and Elite laid the groundwork by uh, establishing the setting she was in, um, establishing her desire to what she was hoping for, and laying the groundwork, how the dynamic with everyone around her, and how they were, uh, the high-class citizens were putting pressure on her to um, you know, be impressive, whereas um, to um, spend time on you know, herself, her appearance, where... Uh, her friends, she was feeling pressure to also do right by them, get Twilight a nice gift and all that. Uh, this episode telegraphed what was going to happen with a song playing up Rarity's generosity till she kind of seemed flanderized. Uh, Sweet and Elite, it showed us Rarity's progression with still the best montage song I've ever seen from this show, just um, really getting us behind her perspective, showing us why she gets so into this, exactly, uh, just sort of putting us in her shoes with how she, uh, loves this so much, and just how, what it sort of does for her to be in the spotlight, and in her element, and do all of these great things, and how that also, um, put, like, pushes her to forget about, um, yeah, the, what she was wanting to do for Twilight, even though that's still in the back of her mind, and that's still, at the end of the song, we see something she's uh, worried about. This episode has her collapse at the drop of a hat. The, you know, like, it gives, has her go off the deep end with no progression and no connection to anything that might have led her to that point. Just, yeah, okay, something, somebody um, did something that the opposite of generous to her, took advantage of her generosity, and then she, in turn, does something that is akin to being the opposite of generous, but, you know, vague connection, but she goes off the deep end irrationally and with no progression, so, and then she, likewise, recovers with, she just sees, uh, notices that she's, 
forgotten her friends and then just goes back on it uh, just as randomly. So, okay. And then Sweet and Elite so intelligently avoided that message, uh, that cliché, overused, terrible message about how if uh, you have friends and you do wrong by them, you owe them. That your friends are more important than anything at any time and that uh, you and that there's nothing you shouldn't be able to sacrifice for them. The Sweet and Elite so intelligently avoided that message, and this episode, uh, well, didn't. And so, yeah, I mean, I won't say that there's nothing good about it. Like, uh, I did sort of like uh, what they did with the Coco Pamel character, because, I mean, she's sort of identifiable, you know, someone who's, uh, I guess knows the name of the game, but is still very shy and very, uh, easy, still at a stage where she's very easy to influence, so I mean, I, um, kind of like how they, um, show, they vouch for what generosity can do, also as an example, inspiring her to do the right thing and find a better, uh, path for herself. Okay, I mean, I liked that, I, I liked the reprise of, um, the song, the, um, the Manhattan song, because, I mean, that was, uh, like I said, a tender little moment, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's all just very, very isolated, and, um, I, yeah, it's, I really know momentum to build from that, I think that this episode just, it's kind of a bust, well, I mean, uh, after, I don't know, after starting out this season with, uh, Princess Twilight Sparkle, uh, you know, it seemed like uh, that it was maybe recovering its inspiration. I was really excited for it there, and I mean, we were going on, and um, it seemed to be getting there, getting closer to uh, what it had before, but I, and except for in the last episode, you know, that was, it seemed like it was stumbling a little bit, but um, yeah, now um, it its attempt to swing for the fence is this, exactly the same as it was in Magical Mystery Cure, and I mean, which, yeah, a lot of fans seem to like, well, actually, I should say something, because I mean, a lot of, um, I've been told that by some that Magical Mystery Cure sort of divided people because not everyone wanted to see Twilight become a princess, and I think that's, um, pretty interesting, actually, because if this episode really does have just, uh, universally a positive response than if the only difference is that Twilight became a princess, you know, I would argue that all of those people um, trying to, that are rejecting Magical Mystery Cure, that are vouching against it, I would argue that they should support it if they support this, because, you know, that Twilight becoming a princess, that's progression, that's taking it to the next level, you know, to, that's, that's a payoff to everything we've seen. That, in fact, that not just a payoff, that's at, at advancing the character, doing more with them, you know, uh, taking the story further instead of just repeating it. So, okay, I mean, yeah, I, that, in fact, that was sort of the redeeming factor of Magical Mystery Cure for me. That's why I didn't give it a thumbs down, why I still said there were things to enjoy about it. So, uh, this rarity... It's in the most dramatic fashion possible, comes back to where she starts. She uh, learns that she still likes to be generous in an episode that did not explore her or her friends or um, even how she, how her inner workings go at all. So I would kind of have to wonder at this point, I mean, what if the writers have really learned anything from season three? But, I have mentioned the blog before, uh, several times recently, and, uh, and that I was a little bit ahead in that. Right now, I am exactly one episode ahead of this one, and I was, we were halfway through the review, uh, the guy I'm teamed up with for the blog there, and I, and before we finished, he, uh, put it on hiatus, he has a lot to do, he's pretty busy right now, so the blog series at this point will probably be going on hiatus for a while, so after the next episode, you will know what uh, my honest opinion of where this season stands is uh, every time, when I do. 
So, okay. Where do I actually stand on this season, the show, right now? Come back for Pinky Apple Pie and see. Until then, take care. And be gentle, please. <laughs>